So that's where we are now. The land of complexity. We try to orient ourselves in this chaotic universe. And uh, we find some more meaningful structures in the landscape of complexity, somewhere between complete chaos and total order. So I hope you feel a bit more safe now when we know where we are in the universe. And uh, join me on this little travel back in time. And picture yourself, the ancient Italy, and an old man who sits there with a string instrument in his lap. And uh, his name is Pythagoras. And he was exploring the vibrations in harmonic sounds. And what we see here on top is the first oscillation of a guitar string. And what he found out was that these initial oscillations immediately multiplies into several smaller oscillations and vibrations in the material. And it doesn't just happen randomly. Everything seeks its equilibrium in this world. And uh, so does the excitation points here, which follows this exponential curve. And there is where you actually put your fingers when you play the guitar to get the different tones. These harmonics, if you put them on a piano keyboard, the first one is actually an octave, the next one is the fifth, then we have the fourth, and the major third, the minor third, and it continues like that probably forever actually. But um, that gives a character to different musical instruments, depending on the individual volumes of these waves. And uh, when it comes to the frequency, well, we have seen that they correspond the musical notes on a keyboard, so it's not a human invention. The system was already there in nature for us to use and create beautiful music. So, let's study another instrument. Here we have a cymbal, and you might think of it as only being some kind of white noise. Uh, but actually, if you record it into computers, and analyze the spectrum, really dramatically pitch down the tone and the speed of this and augment everything, all the proportions, you will be able to suddenly hear a complex weave of harmonics climbing around in the sound of this material. And, uh, that is something you can orchestrate for a musical ensemble to play. And uh, that is something that the School of Spectral Music Composers have done in France since the 70s. And we will now listen to a little music example by the French composer Gérard Grissy, who has been using this technique. <laughs> Turns out to be a lot of music in a cymbal strike. Uh, we take our beautiful wavelengths in the audio domain, and add them on top of each other in the visual domain, and suddenly we see we resemble a shape that we see in nature. And it turns out that living material grows harmonically, sharing some similarity to the exponential curve in building up harmonics in audio. And uh, this is not a new discovery. It has been known since ancient times by humans exploring nature and materials and develop new artistic innovation. Painters, musicians, all of them trying to touch our emotions by balancing on the edge of order and disorder in this landscape of complexity. And uh, actually, if you reduce the golden proportions, you find the number between zero and 10. I think it's six. So uh, it's a bit more sexy than the number of five. And uh, probably that's why it creates life. Now, we will take this sequence of numbers here called the Fibonacci sequence which builds up the golden spiral. And I've made a little musical remix on those numbers there. I never knew Mona Lisa was into electronica. So, this is the future in the north of Lund. Well, it could be. It's an artistic interpretation of the future, the possible future. And in the north of Lund, we will build one of the three largest material research centers in the world. And um, in the foreground here, we see uh, the European Spallation Source, ESS, where you will study material on the atomic level with the help of neutrons. And uh, the ring, which is in the background, is uh, MAX4, where they will study 
materials with photons. And in the middle, you had a science city. Now, uh, what about material science? Well, this is a possible instrument in one of the experimental stations in the ESS, and we put some material to study in that, and uh, we bombard it with neutrons, and on our computers, we arrive spectral data like this. It's diffraction patterns telling us the uh, positions of the different particles in the material, and we can generate nice graphics and take the analysis further to investigate the properties of different materials and uh, hopefully create a more sustainable society with more sustainable materials. So uh, I believe that the ESS will be a great source for new artistic innovations as well, because I mean, I just shown you in the presentation how people through the history have been turning to nature and the material studies to develop their artistic innovations. So with this, we are developing at ESS right now a concept called Neutral Music, and perhaps we will see the birth and dawn of a Neutral Music Festival, where we will gather different composers and artists and people like you to work around this concept and uh, study the different patterns we find in the domain of material science. And, um, well, it's the initial phase. I don't have any Neutral Music yet to play, but perhaps next year, next Q-Day. Thank you. Have a nice evening.